It's your daily dose of Donna. Happy Thursday, love beans. It's April 4th, and I am so excited to have you guys here as this is my last official show for the week. I'm not going to promise anything because I'll be down in the desert and maybe I'll wake up tomorrow and say, hey, let me jump on YouTube and record a little quickie. A quickie, that's what she said. But officially in studio, this is my last show of the week. A girl's got to take a vacation. Okay, so I'm heading over to the desert later, right after the show, actually, just right after this. We're getting in the car and we're driving down to Palm Desert, but I am not going to leave you guys hanging because while uh, I'm leaving town, you guys will have a fantastic filled episode with just all kinds of crazy stories that keep popping up. And we're lucky in this business because there will always be a story. Someone will always speak at a turn. Someone will always say too much on a podcast. And luckily for you guys, on Daily Dose of Donna, we cover it all. So this is your Daily Dose of Donna. Did you guys spend your Wednesday night watching True Tory from 2014 like I did? <laughs> Someone get me out of the Tory spelling hole. Like I'm in a hole. I have a problem. And then, oh, let's see if it's still on my phone. I was sitting talking to Lance in bed. Yes, we sleep in the same bed, guys. I was sitting um, talking to him about it. And I was like, I have a problem. Like I cannot get out of this Tory spelling hole. And he was like, well, what are you watching? Like, why? Why are you watching it? So I started Googling and like reading all these old um, articles. I was interested in seeing pictures of, you know, when they first got together and seeing Tory Spelling's kids now. And I'm just like, I don't know. I'll get out of this, you guys, I promise. But I couldn't believe, I was going through the pictures and I couldn't believe, I mean, so this is what they looked like, I would say, somewhat recently. Let me try to think of like kind of, okay, I think you guys are going to be kind of um, surprised by this, but this is what they looked like recently-ish, okay? Like, he looks busted. <laughs> he looks older. I mean, this is not even the worst picture I saw of him recently. He just doesn't look at his best. But this is what they looked like when they first got together. Please, you guys look at Dean. Have you ever seen someone that has aged so fast and so tremendously? And I know that it's a lot of alcohol, probably drug use, probably a lot of things. But I found myself actually saying, wow, I never really thought of Dean McDermott as a good looking guy. But when you look back at really old pictures, like when they first, first, first started dating, I mean, he aged real fast because I don't remember them, him, him even looking this good, like on season one of their reality show. But yeah, this is when Liam was like a little baby. It's a good looking guy. It's a good looking guy. Interesting, right? All those kids, so many kids. <laughs> 5,000 kids later. I promise you we're not going to get deep into the Tory spelling story, except I'm going to Palm Springs with one of my best friends who used to own a pet store. This is the best because she used to own a pet store at the Glen Center in like after we graduated um, high school, college. So like probably early 2000s. She, the Glen Center is this really popular, it's called the Glen Center. It's on Beverly Glen and Mulholland. So if you're driving from, technically, I guess you could call it Bel Air, but if you're driving from the valley over to the city and you're taking Beverly Glen, it's a lot of places, like people just meet up there, you know, if you're meeting people that live on both sides. So for example, like Kyle Richards is there a lot. Um, they've sh shot a lot of shows before there. Remember, um, Eden, who used to be on Real Houses of Beverly Hills, she used to, I think, have a store there. Um, it was just a lot of places. Like, a, it's a very popular spot. Anyway, she had a pet store there. And so she has crazy stories of all these celebrities. So she texted me this morning. She's like, I've got a good Tory spelling for your, for your show. So I'm going to bring it all to you guys and more. Um, so let's get into today. We have such a big show. So let me just quickly throw out some of our 
incredible sponsors of Daily Dose. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. As you know, how is your social battery right now? Are you feeling like you need some alone time? Do you feel like you need to really increase your social get-togethers, become a little more extroverted? You know, are you still living in that 2020 pandemic lifestyle where you like don't see anyone? You just go online and, you know, YouTube and and that's like how you connect is through <laughs> Facebook groups. Well, maybe you're going to need some socializing, but how can you figure out the right way of like the right amount of socializing for you? I think therapy. Therapy can give you the self-awareness to build a social life that doesn't drain your battery. And it helps me. Therapy helps me in so many different ways. I'm constantly going to therapy. And so does everyone else on our crazy reality shows. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find your social sweet spot with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Donna, D-A-N-A, today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Donna. Let me get one more in, and then we're going to get into the stories. Our next sponsor of this week's shows is Dr. Motion Socks, my compression socks. You guys are buying them. I'm getting DMs. I'm getting messages. I know you guys are going to drmotionsocks.com to buy compression socks. They have all different sizes, all different styles, all different colors, short, medium, long. You can get thicker if you're going into cooler weather. You can get thinner if you're in the summer, spring era. Check out compression socks. They have uh, non-binding lycra and graduated cuff that allows maximum stretch to provide unrestricted circulation if you have like diabetes or any circulation st struggles. Um, they're made with blended materials to provide a soft, comfortable feel and promote healing and softer skin. And remember, if you buy the tights, you get a cotton gusseted crotch. I mean, that should be the top of the ad. Do you want a dry crotch? Buy some Dr. Motion socks. Okay, let's get into the show and I'll bring up a couple later. Um, oh my gosh, you guys, we have to talk about the Vanderpump Rules drama that is kind of like happening behind the scenes. So this is our top story of today is the Vanderpump. You know, normally like the show is not giving us that much, to be honest, we've all watched it. And it's like, actually, I'm pretty surprised how many of you guys are not into Vanderpump Rules this season. I got a spray tan yesterday. Shout out Andy Tanning. I should, um, I'll post about her on my Instagram story. So make sure you follow me on Instagram to come with me to Palm Springs. But if I, I, I was posting about her, um, I mean, I was talking to her and she's a huge reality fan. She loves all this shit. And she was like, I can't watch Vanderpump Rules this season. Like they're just sitting on my DVR. I cannot watch them. And I thought to myself, I wonder how many people are like that right now. I wonder how many people gave the first episode a try. And remember those first couple of episodes were literal torture to get through. Like they were so hard to get through. So my question is, I wonder, are we feeling, you know, like the, the ratings are really down. Okay. That being said, if the show, I don't think as many people are talking about the actual show as they're talking about now, the fallout of the show, meaning what people are saying. Cause you know that there is like an additional character on Vanderpump rules. You have the cast and now you have the podcasts of the different cast members, because all of these podcasts that these people go on and blab about their lives they all tell the story for next season. I mean, this is how it works, right? So, <clears throat> so the episode aired on Tuesday. Yesterday, we talked about it. But Lala Kent has made so many headlines. We have to talk about what she said on her podcast. So there was a variety of things she said. I'm going to pull up, um, you know, my favorite Instagram, by wig, hello, drama, although so many people covered this because it was kind of like crazy how all in she's gotten against Ariana. So she had Heather McDonald on as a guest on this episode. And Lala, I mean, she's, I listened to it. She, I don't listen to her show regularly. It's not because I don't want to. It's just, you know, I'm like, there's too many things out there, right? But Lala was, <laughs> Lala was, and is really drawing a line in the sand with her and Ariana's friendship. We do know and we have heard that at the reunion, which was filmed like 
probably a month ago now. I can't remember specifically the date. We heard that apparently Ariana eviscerated Lala and it's a friendship ender. Lala has confirmed on an interview that one of those things is true. So we kind of just assumed that that meant it was a friendship ender because we don't believe that Lala would actually, well, I say we, I don't believe anyone like Lala would say, yes, Ariana eviscerated me. I think Ari, Lala has way too much of, you know, self-confidence and an ego to say that. However, what's interesting to me about this whole thing is why is Lala going to town trying to get the story out about kind of how bad Ariana is right now. And there's a few reasons that I think. First, I want to just play a couple clips. Um, Let me see if I can find the best of the, uh, you know, remember in the after show, number one in the after show, they filmed this before the reunion, the after show. And she was already talking shit about um, Ariana. She was talking about the garbage bag thing. Remember how, um, how she was saying, uh, you know, you did a garbage ad. Why can't you at least throw the garbage away? So she was already, you know, kind of pissy about that anyway. Now, meanwhile, I'm going to share with you guys a few different things here. So stay tuned. Um, let me get it on the screen so we can all hear it together. This is a page six interview. Um, all This is by page six with Evan Real and Danny Murphy. So I just want to say that first. I, the volume's not on yet, so don't worry. Um, but this is an article or an interview where Lisa Vanderpump talks about Ariana and Lala's quote unquote fallout after the reunion. And this is what she says. Let's watch it. Are are hoping to get a little bit of tea out of you as it pertains to the recently filmed Vanderpump Rules reunion. What we're most interested in Lisa is the relationship between Ariana and Lala. Apparently Ariana eviscerated Lala. They're no longer friends. What is your take on the situation? And are you so heartbroken to see that they're no longer as close as they once were? Oh, I wouldn't say Ariana eviscerated Lala. Oh, was that, see, that's what I was confused about because Lala's got that lethal mouth, which we oh. love. We love her for that. So I was like, was it the other way? Did Lala eviscerate Ariana? Well, it was very complicated because when we jumped into that, there was a lot of heightened feelings. Still, look, it was very difficult for me. And I talked very honestly about the whole suicide and you know, of my brother, and didn't go into depth about that, but I talked about how I'd been involved with suicide prevention, and then my brother had committed suicide, and then for Tom to actually saying that he had suicide ideation because he felt the whole world was against yeah. him, which it was. When they talked about it at the Adele concert, Adele is in a break, and the White House Correspondents Dinner you know, talked about it, and CNN are running, it was too much. So yeah. I tried to facilitate some kind of cohesion, but still, Ariana and Tom were living in the same house. So how could you then draw a line and say, guys, you're not allowed to see him when they're living in the same house? Okay. So from this interview, we immediately hear that Ariana actually did not eviscerate Lala. So either Lala eviscerated Ariana or something else. Now, we know that Ariana and Lala are no no longer friends, apparently. So Lala has now, on her own podcast, really doubled down on this. And yesterday in her interview with Heather McDonald, or her conversation with Heather McDonald on Give Them Lala, she talks about a lot of things, including the fact that Ariana never stood up for the girls when Tom has been unkind to her. Check it out. Get why the cast is like, um, the friends and everybody are like, but you're doing fine. Like you've made all this money. You've got the lemonade is like flowing. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, yeah, she got all these opportunities and she took them, and that's great. But that doesn't mean that she should get over this any quicker. And that, if I'm just paying devil's advocate, because I I see what you're saying on the show and I get it. But at the same time, it's like when I've had stuff like that happen with me, people are like why are you still harping on this thing that this person did to you that was so awful? You are doing great. You know, your show didn't suffer. You are gone every weekend killing it. Like, why do you, why can't you just let it go? And I don't think anyone's wanting her to let it go. You're allowed. I get it. You're allowed to not let it go and go insane on him. Got it. The problem I'm having here is you're using all of these words 
that I very much feel. I can literally sit here and have empathy because I've felt those same things. The difference here is you choose to stay in the house and everyone can say he should have left. I agree, but we now know who Tom Sandoval is. Tom Sandoval is the guy that that has sex with your best friend in your home while you're you know, mourning the death of your grandmother. He's shown. So let's not sit here and be like, I can't believe he wouldn't move out. He's shown who he is. So now we have to take control of the things we can control, which are ourselves. If he's making you feel this way and you're staying in the house, I got questions. If he makes you lose your mind like this and you are traumatized by what he has done, I want to know how you can move on to a new boyfriend in 10 days. I'm genuinely wondering this because when someone's using the same words that I'm using and I feel for you, I want you to shed knowledge on how you can stay in the same house and get a boyfriend in 10 days. How do you compartmentalize? I don't understand it. Okay. So she's obviously really, really, uh, she's feeling really confidently confidently speaking about the fact that Ariana is doing something that is shocking and confusing to Lala as someone who has gone through a really crazy, you know, conned feeling in a relationship. Not two things cannot be compared, right? How one person deals with heartache and grief is very different than how someone else deals with heartache and grief. Lala does make some really good points. And I do agree that Lala um, does have a leg to stand on with some things. But when she says that you can't be grieving if you have a new boyfriend in 10 days, da, 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 or that you're still living in the house, it's, it's giving a little bit of a, because I've like, I've never thought Ariana should stay in that house, right? You guys know that very clearly, but I never said that it, it's obvious that she's not actually hurting because she's still in that house. I don't think that that's the same thing. I think she's still grieving. She just handles it very differently. Lala is not the kind of personality I bet in anything that she does in her life. She's not a passive person. She's not a, um, you know, kind of internalizing person. Lala, if she feels something, if she wants to say something or if she wants to do something, it's it already happened yesterday. She's just a doer that way. Ariana is definitely not. I've never felt the vibe from Ariana that she is a uh, go-getter in, in a lot of ways. I really haven't. I think the reason why she got all this incredible fame and all these deals and everything, it's not because she has worked to get them. It's because they have come to her. And, uh, you know, yell at me if you want. But I do believe I've watched the show for long enough to kind of get the vibe that Ariana is not breaking down doors, trying to get in and hustle her way through. I get the vibe that she's much more about like a casual, relaxed person, but all these great opportunities have come to her. So I don't think she's the kind of person that's like, I'm so pissed at you, Sandoval. I'm already packed up and leaving in the middle of the night the way Lala did. Also, you have to remember that Lala was dealing with like a serious, you know, psychopath, liar, God knows what Randall was. And she had a kid involved. So Ariana is not worried for her safety, probably the way maybe Lala was worried about Randall. I don't know. So, um, oh, Andrew says the theory is that Ariana quit the show on the last part of the reunion and the rest of the cast feels like she's bailing on them all. Yeah, but why haven't we heard anything from like Katie, any negativity about it from Katie or anyone else? I do believe Lala did say yesterday she was interviewed on another podcast I'm sorry, on E! News with Justin Sylvester, she was interviewed. Here, I'll show you guys this one. Let's take a look at what you said to Andy Cohen at Watch What Happens mm. Live just a few months ago. Who do you currently trust the most? You know, Katie's, Katie's a vault. Okay. Katie's a vault. Okay, who do you currently trust the least? Honestly, I, I they're all three of them. I would trust them with my life, honestly. Oh, okay, good. Yeah. Okay, boy, have times have changed. <laughs> now, we want to see where you stand today with a round of Notes on a Scandal. Yes, yeah, so we're going to ask you a couple of questions. Who currently has the bigger ego, Tom or Ariana? Oh, Ariana's blowing us all out of the water. Even me. Really? <laughs> Which is wild. <laughs> I'm very curious about Maya the dog. Justice for Maya. Okay. I'm going to keep, I could keep showing it to you, but it's a longer clip. But the most important thing that she says in this interview is, 
Ariana's blowing us all out of the water with her ego, even mine. And then also she says a little bit later on that something happens, an unprecedented reunion moment happens that has never happened before. And she it makes her heart beat double just to even think about it. So this is really interesting. What Ariana, what Andrew just said, which was this theory that Ariana has actually quit the show in the reunion. Number one, bless her if she did. I do believe Ariana has no need to be on the show anymore. In fact, I think the show may hold her back because if she's going to portray this like bitter, angry person like she has in this last episode, it's a bad sign for her. She's, you need to like, you need to get off while you're still in, you know, high um, respects by people. And the longer she's on the show, I feel like it's not going to actually like do well for her reputation. Um, she got Love Island. She's ca- she's hosting Love Island, which is a huge gig, huge with a big budget. Okay. So I'm sure she's going to make a good amount of money from that. And there's no way that she won't be able to get herself another acting job, singing job, Broadway job, movie job, TV job. I mean, people know that she brings the ratings. People bring, she brings the viewers. She's proven that now time and time again with a few different things with Dancing with the Stars and then, of course, Chicago. They've had to extend her run on it. So clearly she's like, she's a get. From the casting perspective that I have, if we were casting a show right now and we needed to find a female lead, she would be on the list. No question, no doubt. Like this girl is getting offer after offer after offer and she's turning it down because she's can't. She probably can't do it physically or 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 she doesn't want to do the job. So I don't think that Ariana is in any position right now where she is like worried about her next gig. I mean, maybe she is, but I can't imagine just knowing the business. Our industry or the Hollywood industry, the casting world, like Ariana is on every list. And if you're a casting director listening to this, because a lot of my fellow casting directors and agents and stuff listen to the show, please like let me know. Send me a DM or, or write a comment here if you don't think that she's on lists. But I know that like there's no way. Now, I don't know about Sheena Shea but I know Ariana's on lists. So anyway, the point is, it would be really interesting if Ariana quit the show. That, okay, so here's my theory of why Lala is going below the belt, talking horribly about Ariana. She even mentioned something really disgusting about the fact that they both lost their dads and she felt like Ariana didn't have as close of a relationship with her dad as Lala did, which is like so disgusting to say. So, this is my theory. Okay. This show is dangling by a thread. Do I believe that the ratings are horrible? No, I think they're doing fine for Bravo. But do I think that the show has the legs? Do I think that the show has the legs like, you know, to go five more seasons? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I think we're all so over them. We want to watch this story play out, but I feel so incredibly over a, I don't care about what happens to Sandoval. To be honest, I really don't care about what happens to Schwartz in the long run. James and Allie, like paint dry. Uh, Sorry. Um, Brock and Sheena, like they're on, there's so much online about them and social and podcasts. Like I don't need the show. I don't need Vanderpump rules anymore. I'm just going to be 100% honest. If Vanderpump rules ended at the end of this season, I would not be sad. I think we've gotten what we've gotten out of it. We have the Valley to keep us going. We have Vanderpump Villa. We have Summer House. We have uh, Southern Hospitality. We've got a new, like a round of younger shows. I am okay to say goodbye to Vanderpump rules. That's my opinion, okay? That being said, these people are freaking the F out. Okay. There's no way that they're not. Lala is like, she is in a, she has a moment where she needs more than anything to drum up publicity for the show because Ariana is not saying a damn word. Ariana is not promoting the show by any means. Right. Sandoval like is not bringing more people to watch it because people are disgusted by him. I don't think Katie and Schwartz are helping the case. Like Lala's the only one out there that is making us want to tune in now. Think about it. 
whether or not you agree with what she's saying, a lot of you guys think what she's saying is disgusting. But doesn't it make you want to keep seeing what's going on at the end of the season to know that, like, why it got so bad? I'm definitely going to be tuning. I mean, it's my job, but I'm going to be tuning into every single episode until this reunion because I want to see where how it got to where it got that it's this bad that Lala is doing a full press tour of her hatred against Ariana. So that is something I need to know. That being said, you know, I don't know. We'll have to see. But I think Lala is actually being incredibly strategic right now. Because look how many um, press, like how much press she's getting from it. People are tuning in. She's getting on E. She's getting on this. She's getting on that. Access Hollywood, People Magazine, like everyone's talking about her. No one has anything else to talk about for Vanderpump. No one else is doing shite. So I'm curious if you guys agree with that. We'll have to see if uh, that's why. Now, meanwhile, Kristen, oh my God, Kristen Doty has her own podcast with her uh, her paint dry boyfriend, Luke. And we can put like all our paint dry people in one room. Like who would be in the paint dry room? It would be Carl Radke, Kristen's boyfriend, Luke, um, James and Allie, or at least Allie, no offense, but like, come on. Um, who else is paint dry? Uh, I mean, there's always a paint dry in every show. We'll have to, we'll have to learn about it. So, um, wait, hold on. I'm just, re I'm so interested in your guys's comments. Huh? Okay. Really interesting. A lot of people think Lala should be, Lala and Sheena should go over to the Valley. They would be a much better fit. I actually totally agree with that. It doesn't really make any sense that they're not. So we'll have to see what happens. Um, okay, so let's let's keep it going. Kristen Doty was on her podcast with Paint Drag Luke, and he wasn't on the show. It was with Lego Boy Zach, who's on the Valley, and she <laughs> shared a story that is so wild. You guys, Kristen Doty is actually insane. <laughs> I mean, I say that allegedly, but really, honestly, she's wild. Kristen is wild. She's been wild from season one, episode one of. Of Vanderpump Rules, and she is still this way. Like you see it, you see it in her show. But she comes out and she said, um, that when she had just broken up with Tom, so this is like season one, season two time of Vanderpump Rules. She breaks up with him in November. He starts dating Ariana in December. Guarantee you, he was her hooking up with Ariana already. I think that everyone is aware of that. But anyway, you know, Tom is Tom. So she said that she went through a period where she would hack into his email and she and her mom almost went into his email and canceled his reservation for a vacation that he was going to take with Ariana, canceled like a hotel reservation, like a wine tasting, a hot air balloon, et cetera, et cetera. And she didn't. She's like, but we didn't. So. I hope this works, you guys. I had a little bit of like a technical difficulty. Are we here, everyone? Just give me a heads up. Okay. You guys are so funny. 
she's gone. She's gone. And then Mark says, she'll be back. Just like Arnold. You know, my obsession with Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm back. Me and the chapa. <laughs> I'm here. Okay. So, um, anyway, the point is, is that, <laughs> uh, Chris and Dodie is nuts. You guys, I just talked about Chris and Dodie and my, my computer froze. Do you think Chris and Dodie has a voodoo doll out there about me? Jeez. All right. We're going to get into our next story brought to you by One Skin. I want you guys to know that my skin is brought to you by One Skin as well because I use the One Skin main like moisturizer using the peptide OS01. There is nothing like feeling the feeling of being confident in your own skin. So I have to tell you about today's sponsor, One Skin. Their products makes, makes it easy to keep your skin healthy while looking and feeling your best. No complicated routine, no multiple step protocols, just simple scientifically validated solutions. So just remember that the secret is One Skin's proprietary OS01 peptide. It's science. It's the first ingredient pr proven to switch off the aging cells that cause lines, wrinkles, and thinning skin. Check them out. Zoom in on that baby. And they've got several studies to back it up. I've been using their products for a while now and I'm hooked, but don't just take my word for it. One Skin has over 4,000 five-star reviews and we're recognized by Fast Company as one of the most innovative brands in 2024. For a limited time, you'll get an, an exclusive 15% off your first One Skin purchase using the coast code Daily Dose. One word, Daily Dose, D-A-I-L-Y-D-O-S-E when you check out at oneskin.com. Code try one skin and enjoy it. younger, healthier skin without all the extra steps. And make sure you tell them it's from me. Okay. Um, Kristen and Lala hate each other, by the way. Laura says, Can you see Kristen and Lala interacting on the valley? Yeah, Kristen does not like Lala at all. I would absolutely love to watch the two of them together on the valley. It would actually bring the heat that the valley needs. Although the audience maybe doesn't want more Lala and, you know. Her podcast is called Give Them Lala. Do they want more Lala is the question. Do they? A lot of you guys do not want more Lala. Okay, we have to talk about the Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip. This story that just broke this morning, which I can't believe we're still talking about this story because the fact that like we're still having conversations about Caroline and Brandy and this Ultimate Girls Trip, I just thought at this point they would never want to bring up her name again because Brandy is now like suing them and doing that. Well, you know, she's obviously very anti and against um, Bravo and Andy Cohen and all of them. But in this article that just came out, hold on. In this article that just came out, it says Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip executive producer claims that Brandy Glanville disrespected Caroline Manzo, but didn't sexually violate her. Hmm. So this woman's name is Lisa Shannon. I've looked her up. She's a senior vice president of programming and development at Shed Media. Shed Media is owned by Warner Brothers Unscripted Television, and they produce shows like Below Deck and Paris and Love and Real Housewives of New York City, Ultimate Girls Trip. Uh, Salt Lake City, um, and then a bunch of shows for E. Lisa Shannon has been around. Oh my God, do, she developed and sold Mexican D Dynasties. Is that not the best show? Where did Mexican Dynasties go? If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, like go and try to find Mexican Dynasties. I wonder if it's on Peacock. It was only one season, I think. It was so good. I loved it. But it says that in new court documents, she said that Caroline felt disrespected by Brandy. Um, however, that was kind of the extent of it. Um, Manzo claimed that she was harassed and kissed without consent at the behest of production. Did I say that right? Behest? B-E-H-E-S-T. And she, you know, used some pretty graphic details of like the forcible, you know, buttocks grabbing, et cetera, et cetera. But in new court documents filed in response to Manzo's lawsuit, Lisa Shannon claims that Manzo told production at the time, so the day of or whatever, that Glanville's alleged actions that evening had triggered memories of her past childhood trauma, but didn't mention an assault. 
She says, our primary concern at that point was making sure that Manzo felt safe. Read the documents obtained by page six. She told us that she felt safe, that she wanted to continue to film, and that she did not want Glanville to be sent home. Shannon then claims that Manzo was not left alone with Glanville that evening. And the following morning, Manzo told Shannon and other protect production members that she still felt safe and wanted to continue filming the reality series. In a conversation with Shannon, which has then been reenacted in which has been reenacted in the documents, Manzo purportedly told her, listen, I feel safe, okay? I feel your support. This is for me. I'm dealing with something that has been buried deep in my soul for 50 years. The documents also note that following Glanville's incident with Manzo, production seized, including Glanville, in group activities. However, other cast members, including Phaedra Parks, allegedly perceived the events differently. All of us thought we were having fun, Parks, purportedly told Manzo. No one knew about whatever happened to you in the past. Shannon then claims Manzo flew home from Morocco because the rest of the cast informed Manzo in a group text that they were going to visit Brandy at her hotel, which was the only time Manzo allegedly asked not to be filmed. At the time, she asked production crew not to film her, and we honored that request, Shannon writes in the documents. Other than that incident, Manzo never asked not to be filmed or expressed to me or to my knowledge, anyone else from production, that she was uncomfortable being filmed. She continues, noting that Manzo willingly allowed production to film her, discussing her decision to depart the trip. They also paid Caroline in full despite leaving early. Um, and then it continues about what kind of what Brandy is saying. So, wow, you guys, for a Bravo, not a Bravo executive, but she's a, a executive producer for Girls Trip, for her to come back out and say, you know, Caroline's taking this way too far. And this is actually... I mean, it's crazy, right? Because Caroline sued them, Brandy suing them. It's like, there's not really a good person in this crew for a Bravo or for any of them. But I think they're trying to say like, Caroline doesn't really have a leg to stand on. Now, I want to know from you guys, anyone that has actually experienced anything like this. <laughs> Mark says, I feel assaulted by Brandy and I've never even met her. What do you think about having a moment where you experience some sort of something that triggers a, a previous traumatic incident, like a PTSD experience, right? Where you experience something and it reminds you of something that you've maybe tried to push away or whatever, right? We've all had moments like that in our lives to a varying degree. In the moment, you could experience a feeling about it that actually could change months later or you come home from your trip, you speak to your husband and friends and attorneys and you say, hey, this is what happened. I didn't feel comfortable. I did come home. And they said, girl, you got a lawsuit. Just saying. If they have documented that they made sure she felt safe the next day, and they went through like the evaluation and everything. And she confirmed that she was okay and she was ready to keep filming, but she just didn't want to go to Brandy's hotel room, which is why she ended up leaving early. Is that, is like, I feel like Caroline doesn't have a leg to stand on anymore, right? They always say like, don't say anything to the officer if you get arrested, because if you get arrested and you say something that can be used against you, Right. I wonder about that. I mean, it it really is, it can be left up to interpretation. But on the episode of True Tory last time, <laughs> you guys, I knew True Tory was going to come in handy. In the episode of True Tory last night, on the second episode of season one, and Tory Spelling is fully, oh, and by the way, I'm going to talk about this on my Patreon this week. I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about the Brandy and Julie Patreon also. Um, the the on on true Tory in the second episode they're sitting she and dean in a therapist's office that i guess they were seeing even prior to the show and he says very kind of nonchalantly that sitting in that room reminds him of being in that room when the affair first came out 
And he says, I was looking at that window and there's a crack in the window and the, you know, production films, the crack in the window. And he said, I just remember feeling that I could kick out that crack, open the window and jump. And he was essentially admitting on camera that he had had these thoughts of unaliving himself. Well, what happened in that moment? Production had to be stopped. I mean, we saw the behind the scenes because this is a this was kind of like a breaking the fourth wall documentary. But they saw that production had to be stopped. The producer had to sit there and talk to Dean saying, we have to wrap right now. We have to go to legal with this. We have to have conversations. We have to get him evaluated. We cannot continue filming knowing that if he's p- potentially under some sort of duress. And especially if he's having these kinds of thoughts, because obviously the show needs to protect themselves. So I can't imagine a show like Girls Trip with all these big, you know, head honchos and legal and this and that around them would allow her to keep filming had she said, I feel like I just got sexually assaulted. She clearly gave them the okay to keep going. I think Caroline doesn't have a leg to stand on on this one. She has a Viva's leg to stand on. And if you know, you know, just like the orange drank from the bodega. If you know, you know. Okay. Um, all right. So let's keep it moving. Thanks, True Tory, for really coming on in. Okay. <laughs> the orange drank from the bodega. So we'll have to see what happens with that. All right. This next story is brought to you by Lola, Lola V. If you guys are wondering why my hair looks so bouncy, shiny, and clean, it's because I've been using Jennifer Aniston's amazing hair care all week. Not only do I smell like a spa, but I actually feel like Jennifer Aniston. It's crazy. If you use her hair care, you turn into Jennifer. So just, just remember that if you are like me and you have to wash and blow dry your hair on a daily basis, we put our hair through the ringer, coloring, heat styling, stress, aging, the list goes on over time. It takes a toll. And that's why it's crucial to have products that not only repair the look of the damage, but also shield your locks from future harm. Enter Lola V clean plant powered products for every hair type and texture. And here's a treat from for you guys. And I'm telling you today's the last day that you're going to hear about this. So use my code. Go to lolav.com. That's L O L A V I E.com and use the code Donna, D A N A, and get 15% off for a limited time your entire order. And if you're taking hair care advice, why listen to anyone else except the woman who brought us the Rachel and then the person whose name is Donna Spaldana? These are the two people you should listen to about hair care. Go and check out lolav.com and use code D-A-N-A and make sure to tell them Daily Dose of Donna sent you. Hold on, do you guys, do you smell the hair? Do you smell the whiff? Okay. All right. Let's keep it going. I'm reading your comments. It's very, very interesting to me. I cannot continue. Um, I can't like go back through all the comments, but if you guys are watching this on YouTube later, you can just swipe to the right on comments and it says live chat. And you can see some of these comments about a lot of people's opinions on these stories. I love it. It's really fun. Okay. I think it's going to be our final story is... (laughs) I mean, I don't know. Something else will probably come up. Who knows with this show? But um, Scientology. You know, we talked all about the Danny Masterson case early on in in our show. If you guys remember, I had A.A. Ron as a guest on the show. He is like the guy to talk about post-Scientology and all of that stuff. So he covered all of the Danny Masterson trial and he was going live on YouTube every day and it was a really, really interesting time. And so I covered Scientology and went deep into it and I was so scared to do it. And now I realize, like, oh, there's nothing to be scared of. You don't have to be scared about color covering Scientology. You have to be scared about covering Kate Middleton or Heather McDonald. Those are the two things that you have to be scared to cover. Um, Church of Scientology according to today's Daily Mail, tried to derail actor Danny Masterson's rape trial by harassing and intimidating prosecutors, including breaking into their homes and cars, having them followed, and more explosive unearthed documents suggest. Let me tell you something really fast. If you're going to F with anyone in life and they are in Scientology, just get an extra, like, Get an extra lock on your door. Get an extra set of eyes outside. Hire a, like, uh, buy a Doberman. Hire 
Dorit security guards. Get protection. Those Scientologists, sorry. I mean, this is just allegedly, sorry, <laughs> allegedly, allegedly, the Scientologists are scary MFs. Okay. I don't think they're using Lola V. Just saying, just saying. Okay. I can tell they're not. I mean, I've seen some of their hair. So this, this claim in December filing seen by the LA Times claimed that yes, the prosecutor of the, of the trial against Danny Masterson, his home and car windows were broken, home electronics were tampered with, and the defendant's agents surveyed the prosecutor. The declaration did not name the prosecutor or offer any additional detail, and the church, of course, has vigorously denied that members had anything to do with the incident. Well, of course not. It's just random, you guys. It's L.A. has nothing to do with the fact that, like, we are having full meetings about how to take anyone down that goes against us. As I'm saying this like so confidently today, and I'm like, oh, okay. Um, it says, it says here. Now, if you guys are a Guys and Dolls musical listener, do you guys do you guys know Guys and Dolls? Tell me, you can recognize that. It says here when they get off the train from Miami. Do you guys remember that Adelaide? Okay. Prominent Scientologist and actor Masterson was convicted last May of R-A-P-I-N-G. I don't know how I can say that. I don't know if I can say that. Two women in the early 2000s, and then he was sentenced in September. As you guys know, Ashton uh, Scary Kutcher was also very involved with it because he wrote a letter alongside a lot of other people. And he eventually was sentenced, expelled from Scientology, and declared a suppressive person. That's an S P. Um, I'm probably a suppressive person, right? Which the church defines as someone whose behavior seeks to impede the spiritual progress of those around him. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oi. Okay. Um, now the church still maintains that Masterson is completely innocent. So you know where their where their heads are at. But they have been meddling in the trial. Last year, LA County Deputy District Attorney Reinhold Mueller recounted in an awards acceptance speech by the LA Times that similar allegations to the lawsuit saying he had experienced a string of alarming incidents in 2022 ahead of the trial as well. He said he had been run off the road and his house was vandalized and cell signal had been knocked out at his home. He said LAPD detectives who were on the case were also stalked. It's kind of crazy, right? Like it's a strange coincidence that the few people that go against Scientology are now all of a sudden getting all this horrible stuff happening to them. Mueller's wife found a broken window in their home um, and so on and so forth. Like it just goes on. I am telling you, this is so crazy interesting to me. I can't in my brain wrap around like cult thinking because the only cult I'm in is the Bravo cult. You can buy the merch on dailydosepod.com slash store. Welcome to my cult. But other than that, I just think it's so wild how far people go to protect someone that is clearly guilty. I mean, it was so clear to me. But then again, like, I know you guys think I was a conspiracy theorist when it came to Kate Middleton, but honestly, like I try to stay away from a lot of these conspiracy theories. You know, I ain't any, I'm not close to anything Alex Jones like, by the way, I watched that documentary last night. I can't even, the way it left me feeling so awful, the truth versus Alex Jones, conspiracy theorists are nuts. And you guys, I found out something from one of you. This is going to scare you guys. <sighs> okay. Anyway, let me finish with the Scientologist and then I'll just leave you with this one thing and maybe I'll talk more about it on Patreon because I found out about it this morning and I thought I was going to die. Not really, but like, whoa. So Scientology is like, they're off the rocker. I'm sorry. No offense if you're a Scientologist. Also, by the way, I was talking about this with Lance last night. I said, do you think anyone that's a doser is also a fan of Alex Jones? And he's like, I don't know. I mean, it could happen. I really need to know this. I can't wrap my head around anyone that is a fan of Alex Jones. 
after watching this documentary yesterday. If you guys don't know who he is, he's a piece of mother effing shite. And he went really all in on declaring that Sandy Hook, that horrible tragedy, the school shooting in 2012 was a made up um, event, like a completely scripted event as to take away the guns of America. Sick, sick, sick. And actually, if you're an Alex Jones supporter, maybe leave. <laughs> like, I've never, ever told anyone to leave. But now I'm going to add, if you're a homophobe, if you're a racist, and if you are an Alex Jones supporter, <laughs> I can't I can't wrap my head around people that believe this. I really can't. Now, that, that being said, I'm about to tell you guys something that's really going to be upsetting. Thank you. Oh my God. Andrew said it for me. That's literally what it is. Brittany mm, freaking Cartwright. Rotten hail Jax. Brittany Cartwright tweeted in 2013 that she didn't believe in Sandy Hook. Now, as a mother, as a human being, but as a mother specifically, I, I don't understand. And she wasn't a mother, of course, in 2013. This is so long ago. What? Like she's deleted this tweet, but this tweet does exist in in the in the universe because tweets kind of never really go away. I don't understand. Like it really it shows me a lot, is all I'm gonna say. It shows me a lot about Brittany. Because if you, I don't care if it's 10 years ago, 11 years ago. 11 years ago, it was what, 11 years ago, right? No, it was 2012, almost 11 and a half years ago. I don't care if you were still, if you were only 12 years old at the time. The fact that you could actually think that and then tweet it is so wild to me and it's so bad and it really makes me question her as a human being and I don't know if I can like her ever now. I really don't because that's how upset I was watching this documentary yesterday. I was so upset. Like, I just remember, I don't want to cry, but I could cry thinking about it because I remember having a one month old. My little Dylan was one month old. He was born on November 13th, 2012. And we were at a sushi restaurant the night that like all the news was out. And I remember getting all these like articles on my phone or seeing the news up on the TV or something. And I was looking at my little one month old and I was like, his name is Dylan. And remember one of the kids that passed away, his name was Dylan. And I couldn't I couldn't like continue. I, I I was stunted. I was so scared as a mother, like how I was going to go on. So anyone that is a Sandy Hook denier can go kiss my uh, beautiful round tight bum. Okay. Anyway, um, Delulu is right. We'll get more into that later. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here um, and supporting my show and understanding that, you know, it's okay to have different opinions, but I really, really enjoy, <laughs> oh my God, Michelle wins. This is funny. She says, kiss that gusseted crotch <laughs> by Dr. Motion Socks. Kiss my gusseted crotch. It's dry and cool. Thanks to Dr. Motion Socks. I love you guys. Follow me on Instagram so we can go along on the trip together and um, and keep in touch. K-I-T, K-I-T pen pals. Talk to you guys later. Bye.